what will the U.S. do in regards to aiding the rebels and forcing Bashar al-Assad out of office? Earlier, I spoke to Theodore Katouf, former U.S. ambassador to Syria, and I asked him about the different options presented by the U.S. military and which would be the most effective. It depends on what you mean by effective. I am not a great believer in the ability of the United States to get involved militarily in the Middle East and get the outcome we want. I think that we've had a history now of uh, well over a decade of being involved in Iraq and Afghanistan. And to my mind, we haven't um, achieved what we set out to achieve, at least not the way that administrations envisioned it. Clearly, we're going to choose the first option, uh, which is the uh, option to uh, arm uh, some rebel factions and train them, et cetera. But these will be a very finite group of people. And well, it's good, I guess, from some people's perspective that we do this, it's not going to uh, critically affect the course of events between the regime and the opposition. Well, do you really think the U.S. will use one of these options? I mean, what are the repercussions from other countries, from even the allies of Syria, if the U.S. decides to go forward with something? No, the arming and, and training is going to go forward. It was held up in the uh, Congress, the House Intelligence Committee, under Mike Rogers has apparently uh, lifted their objections to this uh, approach, and we're going to do that. Uh, the other four options that uh, the Chief of Staff, uh, General Dempsey, outlined are much more problematic. Uh, as you said, no-fly zones, perhaps bombing airfields, hitting uh, chemical weapons, setting up buffer zones within Syria along the border, and they cost billions and billions of dollars. Frankly, the American people are not supportive of that level of involvement, let alone, I'm not even sure they're supportive of, of this arming and training uh, option. And I think the administration itself under President Obama is very cautious. But at the end of the day, I don't think he wants to get sucked in further. Why even present those options then? Why even have these four other uh, options to look at if they're not going to be done? Domestic politics. Uh, Senator John McCain is very angry at this administration for not doing more to help the Syrian opposition. Forget the fact that part of the opposition is al-Qaeda, but he's angry that we're not doing more, uh, and he's threatened to hold up the reappointment of General Demp Dempsey uh, as the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and therefore uh, the general and the administration thought it politic to uh, outline what could be done doesn't mean they have the intention to actually do it. Ambassador, a short time ago we learned that members of the Syrian opposition will have a meeting with the UN Security Council. What do you make of that and how does that change the dynamics here? I'm not sure what to make of it, but I'm convinced it won't change the dynamics at all because the US, France and Britain have one approach within the Security Council. Russia and China have a very different one. Uh, Russia and China are not fans of, uh, quote, uh, intervention in a country's sovereign internal affairs. Uh, and they don't believe that the replacement of the Assad regime will necessarily uh, be a good thing. And so the opposition can meet all they want with the Security Council, but at this moment it's deadlocked and it's going to stay deadlocked. All right, we'll leave it there. Ambassador, thank you so much for your time and your insight. We appreciate you weighing in. Thank you.